Hi guys, I'm Andrew from Cruise Master and today on Cruise Master Class, we're gonna be talking about the three main types of springs found on caravans and trailers. Today, we'll be talking about leaf springs, coil springs and air springs. Now there are other options on the market such as rubber torsion because that is more typical to the type of suspension, we're gonna leave that for a future episode for independence versus beams. So let's get started with leaf springs. One of the great things about leaves is they do two functions. The first is obviously they support the weight of the caravan or trailer. Secondly, they locate the axle. So in other suspension designs, they might have um, linkages which locate the axle relative to the rest of the vehicle, um, such as an independent arm or radius arms and stuff like that. With a leaf spring, you don't need that because the leaf spring itself does all of the work. Leaf springs, particularly on trailers, do tend to deliver quite a poor ride. Part of that is the fact that you get something called interleaf friction, which is friction generated by how the leaves contact one another. This is good on one hand that it damps some of the motion of the suspension, but at the same time it's tricky for engineers to design for to optimally tune the ride of the trailer. Additionally, particularly on trailers, the leaf springs are completely oversprung. So you'll see them with big leaf packs with rebound leaves in them and all types of things. And this is to try to make them strong enough to handle heavy off-road conditions. And the stiffer and taller you make this leaf pack, the worse and worse the ride's going to get. So it's not a particularly well done thing in the trailer industry. So from there, we move on to coil springs. For the most part in the trailer industry, you'll find coil springs on independent suspensions. They become really popular there due to their utter simplicity. So you can see the complexity before of a leaf spring. There's lots of leaves, there's bushes, there's clips and all types of things. That's it, that's the spring on a coil independent suspension. Obviously you've got the arm and the bushes in, in the arm, but that's not, a, that's not a major issue. There's two main types of coil spring. One that we call a linear spring, the other what we call a progressive spring. And that relates to the spring rate. The spring rate is effectively how stiff the spring is, and that translates to the ride on the vehicle. So we, ch we choose the spring rate to give you a good balance between load carrying and ride comfort on a trailer, as well as in the cars. Linear spring obviously gives you one spring rate, so the more weight you put on it, the softer the ride will eventually get. On a progressive spring, that can be tuned a bit. So for example, this spring here, we use the same spring on our 2.6 ton and 2.8 ton suspensions. On the 2.6 ton, it sits in the lower rate and therefore gives one ride characteristic. When we put it on our 2.8 ton suspension, that extra bit of weight compresses it a bit more, gets into the second, second part of the rate and stiffens up again. So we can use one spring to deliver multiple benefits on the progressive side of things. Progressive springs come in um, multiple different varieties because you can change the spring rate by the, um, the ID of the spring. You can change it by varying the pitch, so the gap between each coil on the spring, as well as tapering the wire. Tapering the wire is quite difficult because they have to pass it through a die which basically reduces it from one diameter to another. So it's quite a hard process. The guys at King Springs have got it down though. So we use that particular method on our um, coil springs for XT. Um, the other benefit that it gives you is it does reduce a little bit of weight on that second stage. So the last benefit of a coil spring is because there's no inherent friction in the system. It's a really easy thing to design for. You have a nice consistent spring rate through the travel range. So it's easy to specify a damper for and the valving inside it. So it's really easy to do a uh, well-tuned suspension. And that's really important when you're looking at an off-road suspension in particular, where you've got to handle corrugations and road conditions and all types of that. That's why these are so popular. 
So moving up, we get into air springs or air bags as they're more commonly known. There's two types of air bags for the most part. One that we call a convolute bag and that can have generally two convolutes. There are some with three for a bit of longer travel applications. And then there's what we call a rolling sleeve airbag. This is more common on what you'd find on trucks. That's more common on what you'd find in either industrial applications or as a helper spring on the back of a ute or that type of thing. So they basically perform the same function. They vary their spring rate with air pressure delivered by a compressor. In terms of how it affects the suspension on, a, on your caravan or trailer, typically a convoluted bag doesn't give you as much travel as a rolling sleeve. So on a rolling sleeve, it's a bit hard to show here by pulling this apart because they're quite stiff, but this part of the bottom here, the piston slides out and this rubber bag on the outside is tucked up, in, up inside there and it opens up quite well and then compresses down quite low. So you get quite a bit of travel out of it, which is really good when we're looking at um, independent suspensions and beam axles for um, long travel applications for off-road conditions. One of the great benefits in particular about the rolling sleeve bag is tunability. So when we're designing an independent suspension here at Cruise Master, we're looking for multiple things. We're trying to make sure that it rides well in all conditions, that it carries load well. And one of the benefits of tunability in this bottom piston here is we can modify the spring rate a bit. So for example, on this one, um, if we hit a big washout, the spring rate increases. So before the suspension even hits the bump stop, it's beginning to support itself within the bag already, which does assist when you're bottoming out hard. It doesn't send such big shocks into the, into the caravan. So really good um, tuning product there. Um, one of the questions we get a lot is, are they susceptible to, to punctures? So in short, yes, obviously it's a bit of rubber here instead of a steel spring. However, because it's um, not like a tire in contact with the ground, it's not having stuff rub against it all the time or rocks come up and um, try to push hard it into the airbag like it does on a tire. So we don't tend to see puncture issues with airbags. Um, whenever we, if we do see an issue with an airbag, it's where something is sitting up and abrading it. So I think in the past few years, I've seen one case of a rock get stuck in an unfortunate place and it rubbed a bit on the bag. But if you've designed your suspension well, if you, in the absolute worst case, you do have an issue with the airbag, Cruise Master suspensions are designed to get you home. So they can sit on the bump stops and you, can obviously, you obviously have to drive a bit more to the conditions, slow down a bit and it will get you through without damaging any more of the suspension. So it's really not something to worry about. Um, life cycle on airbags, obviously not a steel spring, so they can get affected by UV. Good news is they are underneath the trailer, they're not out in the sun. So we see them typically last between 10 or 15 years. So it's not something you're replacing that often. Um, airbags, the great benefit of them is they give a really good ride. That's because as you change the load, the pressure changes and the spring rate changes, which means we can maintain a consistent ride characteristic no matter what the weight is in your caravan or trailer. And finally, obviously they are height adjustable. So on a Cruise Master suspension, we basically advise that you sit at a standard ride height most of the time. However, if you do need to negotiate a, uh, a rock garden or a water crossing where you need a bit more ground clearance, you can lift it up, give yourself a bit more room underneath the caravan. And then the ultimate benefit, and I think why most people buy it, is about setting up at the campsite. So with an airbag, you can level the van out basically on the campsite without having to use chocks or um, bits of wood to level the caravan. You can do it through the control system. So it does make setting up and getting to your first beer far easier. So that's it for the individual spring types. We'll cover off their application and how they fit into the suspension geometry in a future episode. 
So if you're interested in seeing more of our Cruise Master classes, keep an eye out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube so you don't miss out.